Big or small, dazzling or plain, it's really a Beatles world out there. Beatles are aviators, bookworms, woodworkers, sewage cleaners, strongmen and athletes. And if you lump them all together, these small creatures are about the heaviest on the planet. They may only average around two centimeters or so, but beetles are among the greatest conquerors the world has ever known. Over 300,000 species have been recorded throughout the globe. Nearly one in every three animal species on Earth is a beetle. Theirs is the biggest of all animal families. Beetles have six legs and their bodies are divided into three parts. Head, thorax and abdomen. This design places them in the world's most numerous and most successful animal group, the insects. If you could sit all the world's insects on a huge set of scales, they'd make up the major part of the total weight of all living creatures, a staggering trillion kilos, more than everyone alive. Part of the secret of their success is a hard outer skeleton to encase soft, squishy innards, like having your whole body surrounded by a crash helmet. Not all insects have an equally hard exoskeleton. A fly's is quite easy to squash. Insects are arthropods, animals with jointed limbs. There are many arthropods in this world, not just the insects. This pill millipede is one. An arthropod skeleton is made of a versatile waterproof protein called chitin. It's like a rigid Macintosh or suit of armor. And if it has a wax layer on top, it's even more waterproof. It keeps the animal dry and it stops it drying out, critical for life on land. Joints connecting the hard plates are of a softer, flexible form of chitin. Scorpions are arthropods too, and spiders, and pinhead-sized ticks. Caterpillars are of course halfway to becoming insects. Their stretchy skin and bristles are made of chitin. Insects have cousins underwater, the crustaceans, crabs, lobsters, shrimps, Strange to think that a lobster is cousin to a fly. Their eyes are stuck on the end of a stalk, a bit like a periscope, a submarine's eyes. But for sheer numbers of species, you can't beat the insects. And there are infinitely more beetles than other insects. What makes a beetle a beetle? The most obvious clue is a pair of hard outer wing cases which shield delicate underwings. A beetle eats with its legs. That's what its mouth parts really are, modified and foreshortened limbs. And each species has a different design to suit what it eats.
sprouting from its head are its own radio aerials, its antennae. They pick up sound and also the chemical sense of food and fellow beetle. Their owner would be lost without them. These aerials vary. A click beetles are fan or comb shaped, similar to a moth's. This design has a large surface area and can pick up chemical smells from a distance. Insect eyes have thousands of hexagonal lenses, each one like a microscopic TV screen. Some insects see color even beyond the range of humans. So maybe a dung beetle can see much more in muck than just plain brown. This one, Heliocoprus, is Africa's largest dung beetle, and Sisyphus, one of its smallest. Dung beetles are among the world's strongest animals for their size. This ball is much heavier than the beetle behind it. Sisyphus on the right could be in trouble. But then that's the advantage of having a solid outer skin. You can't be squashed too easily. Longer days, food and smells set an insect's reproductive stopwatch running. One sex gives off aphrodisiac perfumes to lure the other. The males in some butterfly species do this. Butterflies mate abdomen to abdomen. Shield bugs get it together the same way, but face in opposite directions, as if it's a tug of war. Sex is risky. While the pair are stuck together, they're more vulnerable. But they must run the risk if they want to hand down their genes. In mating, it can pay a male to arrive last. The females of some species store sperm to use only when ready to lay, so last sperm in is first out. And the males of these species try and make sure it stays that way by leaving a special plug behind them, like a cork in a bottle, to keep out other male sperm packets. Oops, wrong female. Some males have big feet to be able to hang on to the female's thorax and wing cases and not fall off, especially if she goes walkabout, which can easily happen when mating is lengthy. For some, though, it'll be just a matter of seconds before they split. of elephants can make a lot of mess and some of it is cleared up by creatures smaller than their toenails, dung beetles. They have a vested interest in manure but they mate out of sight underground. But before that can happen there's work to do. A spade-shaped head and serrated front legs break up the dung, the be-all and end-all of the beetle's existence. It gets them fit and healthy for mating, and it's the goo that attracts mates.
In this world, it's every waste disposal operative for itself. A world of push and shovel, take where you can, or steal. This is a top commodity. There may be 1,600 beetles on a single pile of elephant dung, and they can eat or bury or roll it all away in less than two hours. There are brood balls and food balls. Brood balls are usually smooth and get rolled away for burial. Food balls are usually rough and ready and can be buried on the spot to be savored later. Any self-respecting beetle works his socks off to stash a hoard before it runs out. There are those other 1,599 muckrakers to consider. At the bottom of the pecking order come the freeloaders. Tiny dung thief beetles are safer underground and can eat the rejects in private. This beetle has a food ball and he's going to bury it. It's quite a modest size, but large ones might weigh 50 times more than the beetle. Imagine pushing a three-ton truck without help. He works fast because what he has is a nugget of brown gold and it's coveted just as much as the real stuff. It's the wild west down here, or east, north or south, wherever there's a deposit of what all dung beetles crave and will fight for. his hard-earned workings and forced to let the thief get away. A roller dung beetle might push his ball 30 meters from the heap. Those that roll, roll by the sun, their navigational marker. The top of a ping-pong-sized ball makes a good lookout to check the sun's direction and roll towards it. This one has his mate on board, hanging on tight. They're looking for their ideal hole so they can mate. And while the demolition gang's still hard at work, other dung beetles are further down the line. Behind closed doors, in the cool gloom of an underground chamber, a pair mate. It'll be a fairly swift process. Some dung beetles have several eggs. This pair will have just one. Back goes the male to join the gang. 
there could still be dung worth salvaging for another mate. While he's talent scouting, his recent partner tidies up. Carefully, she pats the ball to harden it and make it smooth. It's a once-in-a-year ball, maybe once-in-a-life, and inside lies her solitary egg. On hatching, the larva feasts. While it's developing, its mother guards outside and communicates with it. It replies by grinding its mandible, but so far, no one knows what they say. The larva is now a pupa in a hollow shell. Tiny spikes on its back raise it clear of a surface that might infect it with fungus. Several weeks later, the dung ball splits open and out comes a fully formed new beetle, ready and eager to be off to join the crowd and start its own family. This is a tunneling dung beetle. The ground under the dung pile is honeycombed with brood chambers. These larvae are all the progeny of one pair of tunnelers. To make cell life more comfy, the larva plasters the walls, and for that it uses its own feces. Elephant dung contains poorly digested plants tough stuff and not very nutritious. So the more the larva can break it down, the more it can get out of it. Bacteria in its gut help. But the larva is a small dung recycling machine and eats its own feces. As for its parents, mating and egg laying was their limit, not their job to see off enemies. The larva seems doomed to be dragged off to an ant heap and eaten. Until it squirts runny feces in the ant's face. And who wouldn't leg it? The beetle's life cycle involves a true metamorphosis. From egg to larva and now pupa, this future beetle has adult mouthparts and is shedding its redundant larval skin, like its brothers and sisters. It'll soon reach the end of the road to adulthood, and it'll have got there thanks to its parents taking care of its food supplies. Few insects actively care for their young. This water bug is a bit of an odd man out. And it is a male. Male water bugs keep the eggs they've fertilized stuck to their backs until they hatch. But where growing up safely is concerned, most beetle young usually just have to go it alone. Along with other arthropods, beetles and insects made their debut some 350 million years ago. 
Their ancestor was thought to have been a multi-legged creature like the millipede, without wings. Wings and flight took another 100 million years to get going, but insects took to the air before birds. Flight gave them great colonizing potential. Off they went to find new food sources. It also gave them an edge on their predators. The earliest insect aviators probably had fixed wings, like modern dragonflies. But beetle wings are far more advanced creations. The front pair turned into hard shells to protect the flying pair, which fold away. Hard shells and hard wing cases explain why fossil beetles turn up more often than other insects. The best preserved of all ancient insects were set forever in amber, the fossilized sap of prehistoric conifers. Beetles and insects appear suddenly in the fossil record, almost as if they'd come from nowhere, and they look the same now as they did all those millions of years ago. Flying around us today is a collection of living, breathing fossils. Wings and a hard outer shell gave beetles plenty of homes to choose from. The tropics are best, but some even live in high mountains, none in the far polar extremes. Extremes of heat are another matter. It's a harsh and pitiless place but a great many unique insect species are able to live in the Namib Desert. This bundle of leaves may have been growing in this desert since the time of Christ. A Velvicia is an unlikely paradise, but that's what it must seem to these small bugs. A Velvicia bug can spend its life right here on this strange plant feeding on its sap, mating, laying eggs, dying. It never needs to leave. These are some of the Namib's other great specialists, darkling beetles, the leggiest of all. The longer the leg, the further the body from a baking surface, and the faster the beetle can sprint. In contrast, life is lush in Madagascar. This offshore eastern corner of Africa has over 150,000 unique plant and animal species. Among the island's 20,000 different beetles are some very peculiar creatures, like the giraffe-necked weevil, a beetle with an articulated swivel neck even longer than its body. <laughs> Only the male is built in this extraordinary fashion. Perhaps a neck like a periscope makes it easier to scan the foliage for a mate. And it was probably competition to attract them that originally led to this weird adaptation.
Presumably, the giraffe-necked weevil has to tread through life very carefully. After all, when your feet are so far from your face, it must be hard to see where you're putting them. Beetles have taken to water too. A tough exoskeleton keeps moisture in, but it also keeps it out. Whirligig beetles dance through life in a giddy spin. Their leak-proof, streamlined bodies are designed like a boat to slice through water. Legs are paddles. A bubble of air trapped under wing covers feeds oxygen into the body when the whirligig's underwater, like a diver's air tanks. But it's its eyes that are special. It has four, two to see above and two to see below water simultaneously. A good way to keep watch for trouble. But a clawed toad just spits them out. Whirligigs taste awful. Fringing the bottom of Africa is the Fainbos, a very special plant kingdom. And the wealth of flowers in this dramatic coastal region attracts an equal wealth of beetles and other insects. Most of the eight and a half thousand Fainbos plants only grow in this floral kingdom. One of just six in the world, exuberant blooms are matched for color by many of the pollinators. And they provide a distinctive home to many insects and their young. Like most rich habitats, this place owes its diversity to its pollinators, so it's beetles and their relatives that have gradually helped shape their own homes. other arthropods seem slow, but measure a beetle's length per second forward movement and it's the fastest animal on Earth. Bats and birds turned a set of their legs into wings, but insect wings are custom made and fantastically good at their job. Bees beat theirs an astounding 200 times a second. That's what makes the buzz. A bigger insect with bigger wings, like a butterfly, doesn't have to flap so fast, four to 20 times a second in flight. Dragonflies are the real speed merchants. In short dashes, they manage 56 kilometers an hour. These insect helicopters can also fly backwards. Beetles fly well, but they're not exactly graceful. They bumble and blunder and crash land. Of course, it's manure that puts this one in a flap. Its mission could take it 10 kilometers, navigating by smell. Landing might be a bit rough, but no breakages. That's another plus for the hard fuselage. There are beetles that can't fly. If they live somewhere arid, it's not a loss, but a gain. Such species abandon flight in favor of sealing their wing cases, and that stops them dehydrating.
a beetle's legs work like levers, and because they operate one-sidedly, the beetle wiggles and zigzags as it walks. Beetles often climb, and the design of their feet enables them to cling to the vertical without difficulty. Upside down's no problem either. Except when you reach the end of the road, then it's over to the fast travel option, flight. And what better than flight to get quickly from point A to point B in a large open-air food hall, a field of flowers. Beetles eat almost anything to do with plants, or each other. Nectar is popular. As they drink it, beetles and other insects do flowers a big favor, trucking pollen between them, and so helping plants reproduce. But insects also eat pollen. It's protein-rich and nutritious. Mostly, though, it's designed to stick, and some pollinators carry heavy loads. Like this hairy monkey beetle. Mammals can be helpful to beetles in their quest for food. This bush baby eats sap. It uses teeth and claws to tear bark and get at the sugary liquid. When the sun rises and the bush baby has retired for the day, others visit the site of its nocturnal scrapings. Sap is a carbohydrate. It fuels flying and mating. Burst pipelines of sap are a temporary food source that attracts many insects before the tree heals its wound. It foams from the tree like froth on beer, which a butterfly can drink through long mouthparts. There are sap-sucking beetles, too. A fruit chafer, a scarab and cousin to the dung beetle, but its taste is in moisture from a tree not left by an animal. Sap beetles have arrived, too, and fly larvae already swim in the sweet food. A fly drinks with a mouth like a tube, with a sponge at the end to mop up liquid. This resource is a lifeline for many while it lasts. Herbivore dung also contains liquid, and that's what dung beetles are after. The beetle has mouthparts like lemon squeezers, 
specially designed to manipulate dung and extract every last drop of juice, not forgetting the dribbles down its legs. A darkling beetle takes its moisture straight from leaves using mouthparts adapted to bite and chew. Its mandibles cut and pierce and crush. Other mouthparts taste and prepare food and ladle it in. This longhorn beetle is taking a drink directly from the surface of a succulent leaf. Some beetles can eat toxic plants with impunity and use the plant's poisonous chemicals for their own bodily defences. Another longhorn looks for the liquid it needs on leaf litter decaying on the forest floor. A minor altercation with a scorpion and on with the search. Found some, a leaf saucerful of water. The beetle's ferocious-looking jaws are designed to impress a mate, but they're also tools to bore holes in wood where eggs will be laid. Behind these drill bits lie mouthparts designed to scoop up water. Dead animals are another source of food and drink. The flies always get there first. These are their maggots. Theirs is a fast track life cycle because the corpse won't last long. And of course maggots help reduce it to skin and bone. Flesh flies give birth to live young, not eggs. And in just four days they've gone from maggot to pupa, food for predatory hide beetles. Another maggot eater, a sylphid beetle. What a place for opportunists. Food and sex go hand in hand for these beetles. Both sexes rush in to eat and mate and lay eggs while there's still enough carrion to go round. Many other insects are predatory too. A praying mantis only eats the living, usually other insects. Hooked and held with special barbed legs, the mantis doesn't wait for the fly to die before it tucks in. Nothing is rejected, not even a gauzy wing. It may be small, but it's one of nature's more terrible hunters, a carabid beetle. It stalks in a jerky stop-start way. Its eyesight is good, but it moves so fast it must stop and refocus on prey. But is this caterpillar a wise choice? Here's something unarmed, a cricket. The beetle will pounce like a cat and put its powerful jaws to work. 
cutting and slicing and mincing the cricket into bite-sized pieces with mouthparts that fold away, rather like a Swiss army knife. Vegetarian or carnivore, the mouthparts of each of Africa's beetles are part of the great success story of these adaptable insects. In ancient Egypt, the most important amulet was the scarab, as sacred to its people as the cross to Christians. But why venerate a dung beetle? Dung beetles to the Egyptians symbolized immortality. The beetle rolling its ball towards the sun, they believed, was like the sun god Kepri pushing the burning orb across the sky. The Egyptians believed the sun was reborn each day, so for them, Kepri was a symbol of rebirth. A brood ball being placed underground was like the burial of a dead pharaoh. And the lava in its ball symbolized the pharaoh laid out in his sarcophagus, just waiting to be transformed. For his burial, they believed, was a step on the path to immortality. Just as the lava pupates, then emerges as an adult, so the Egyptians believed the pharaoh would rise again, like the sun from the earth, like the god Kepri. Only a few beetles produce sound with wing cases or legs, even necks. Otherwise, they talk silently through smell and color, and some are exquisitely colorful. Refractive layers in the beetle's shell can break up rays of light to create a metallic effect car designers might envy, but sometimes the color is genuine pigment, and some colors send messages of warning. This beetle can run around unharmed because bright yellow sets alarm bells ringing. It means poison. A predator might be taking a bitter suicide pill if it swallowed one. To those who can recognize them, the markings of the blisterer beetle warn of a potent chemical. It blisters skin and damages kidneys. The netwing beetle's orange and black fashion statement also advertises its noxious nature. Many other insects deploy chemical defenses too. This poisonous grasshopper has toxins that damage the heart of enemies such as birds. Some insects use their looks to scare. The fake eyes on this moth's wings might make birds think they belong to a large animal. Many beetles prefer not to send out any visible signals at all. This weevil could be a piece of bark with legs. When one beetle sends a long distance message to another, it uses scent. This male jewel beetle wants the females to come and fall at his feet. So he squirts out special body odors and lets the wind carry them. A ground beetle is also transmitting his sexy signals. But what falls at his feet is not what he wanted. It's another male who may have caught a whiff of scent and known just what it meant. The two check up, just to make sure they really are both the same sex. This often happens in beetle circles. One male posts fragrant invitations on the wind, 
and other males smell them and come to gatecrash the party and steal the girls. Where sex is concerned, all is fair. But an all-male party is no fun. Those two males avoided confrontation, but these two haven't. The loser plays dead so as not to be beaten up any more. And off saunters the winner, following perhaps an alluring, all-pervasive chemical message, the best and most reliable form of beetle talk. Best friend to 100 different dung beetle species is an elephant. And how apt that the biggest of the species is the one that makes its living largely off elephants. Theoretically, without dung beetles, the savannah would be knee deep in herbivore dung. They bury nearly half a ton per acre per year. Birds are often the big enemy. A ground hornbill scans the long grass for grub, which could well be beetles if it comes across fresh dung. It tosses dung beetles back like pistachios. It doesn't even crack them open. Its gizzard will do that. Hornbills eat the beetle's relatives too. A fat solifuge, juicy protein. But some squishy creatures can be quite dangerous. In the dry Kalahari of southwest Africa live people who rarely know their poisons. They depend on them for hunting. And one of the deadliest they use comes from the larvae of certain desert beetles. It's a neurotoxin that can fell a giraffe in just 30 minutes. A few drops of a larva's life juices are enough to make an arrow a lethal weapon. But once the giraffe is dead, the poison from the beetle larvae appears to be neutralized the meat will be quite safe to eat. These hunter-gatherers got to know the Kalahari's deadly pharmacy thousands of years ago. And ever since, beetles have helped them survive in this extreme environment. The greatest friend of any beetle is its number one asset, the tough outer skeleton that gives each its unique look and has made beetles such great survivors. These small creatures, with their huge adaptability to climate and food source, are the most numerous life forms on Earth. So perhaps this planet should really be called the planet of the beetles.